Hey there, Half-Life Alex Modders. This week I received a question from Cuban Maker about passing arguments to Lua scripts from map inputs and outputs. Here's a map from an older tutorial that spawned Combine Soldiers when pushing a button. Instead of spawning Combine Soldiers, I'm going to change it to spawn a gift for the player and accept the entity type for the gift as a parameter to the script. So just as a reminder, there is a logic script entity here. I'm calling it spawn script, and it points to a script spawn loot 2lua And then I have a button, which has a func physical button, and it has an output that when it is pressed, so on in, is going to look to that spawn script entity, and it's going to call script function spawn mpc combine s. And that's going to make an mpc combine spawn right about here. I've modified this script quite a bit. At the top I put a loot table, and this is just a list of items that I could spawn as a gift for a player, so using their entity names. Below that I have this function called spawn gift. And spawn gift is going to take a random integer between 1 and 6, and it's going to index that into the loot table. Actually this should be 1 and 8, because there are now 8 items. I ended up adding a couple items earlier. So spawn entity from table that's going to go there, it's going to grab an entity, so pressing the button would spawn a random gift to the side, and we can try that right now. So I'll take my button pusher, I'll change my output, and instead of calling the spawn npc combine, I'm going to spawn gift, like so. Now notice that spawn gift doesn't take any arguments because it picks an entity or a gift at random to spawn. So here I'm in the map, if I press the button, we get a small gift every time I push it. There we go, press a few times just so you do get different gifts sometimes. There, so that's done. Now I'm gonna go back and instead of spawning a random gift, I'm gonna pass the gift I want as an argument to the script. Now going back to the script file, at the very bottom here I have spawn by name, and I pass it an argument entity. And you can name this whatever you want, I just happen to call it entity. You could call it, you know, foo if you want, doesn't matter. So you just give your argument a name. Now I'm going to check first if my entity exists. If the entity is anything but null, this is going to be true. So I'm going to print out that I'm spawning and the name of the entity, and that's going to go to the vconsole as some debugging line to make sure that things are working properly. If it's nil, I'm going to get error, didn't get an entity, and that's going to print out the line so I can kind of see if something went wrong. Here I set the location for where the gift is going to spawn. Now instead of using an index into my loot table, so here I was passing a number which would index into this loot table, it's going to be passing the name directly. So this string entity is going to be one of these, but I'm going to pass it directly as a string. So if I wanted to spawn this item, then this function is going to have that string as the parameter. Okay, now let's look back at the map and see how that looks like from the map's perspective. If I go back to my func physical button and I go to the outputs, here is the call to the script. Typically I use call script function, but if you want to pass a parameter to the script, then you have to use run script code instead. And run script code allows you to pass parameters here to the function. So where it says with a parameter override of spawn gift, I'm going to change that to reflect the, the new function I'm calling, which is going to be spawn by name. So we'll put in here spawn by name. Now I have an open close parentheses and I'm going to pass the argument here. So suppose I want to spawn a health file. So let's find item health file. I'm going to copy that out and I'm going to paste it in here. There, so that's the first argument that's going to be passed in, and this is going to get mapped to this here, this entity here. The rest of this looks good. Let's give it a try. Here we go, I'm back in the map. Now, every time I press this button, instead of spawning a random gift, it should spawn a health file. Because it's actually taking that string that I passed in, 
and using that as an argument to the function. Now keep in mind, the first time you change the script, if it doesn't work, do a full compile on your map again, because sometimes for some reason it doesn't seem like the changes kick in every time if you run a fast compile. So full compile, if it doesn't do what you expect, and if it still doesn't work, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can help you out. I also wanted to quickly show you the V console. So when you spawn your V console here, and I recommend you have this up whenever you're doing map development, you can see these spawn item help file. This is the output from the V script. So every time I ran that script, as long as I had an entity string here, it would print out the spawn entity. And that's how I can make sure that this is being passed properly. You can also pass any number of things here. So I could have entity two, I could have blarg, and I can have blah. So you can pass any number of string arguments into a function. And then if you go back to your map and your button pusher here, you would just add additional strings here, comma separated, and those will get passed into the script. So that's a way you can pass a whole bunch of arguments to a script if that helps you achieve whatever you're trying to do. Now here's a caveat. It seems like you can only pass string values into functions, or at least as near as I can figure. I'm gonna explore this a little more. But suppose you wanna actually pass a number. And this is gonna be kind of a contrived example. I'm not sure why you'd wanna do this, but suppose I actually wanted to pass a number instead of a name when I spawn a gift. So here to the spawn gift function, I want to spawn, whoops, gift by number. And we're gonna call this entity num. So entity is not gonna be equal to nil, get rid of that. We still have our local parameters. Instead of entity being this, it's actually gonna come from the arguments. But I know this is gonna be a string. And if I actually want the entity, I can say uh, local entity equals two number and see how it turns blue as soon as it recognizes that as a function. So two number entity num and that's going to convert that string into a number. Just make sure you don't pass something that's not a number because then you have to do some error handling. So for our spawn gift by number, the number here is going to correspond to an entry in this table. If I want this item here, this is going to be the third element. So one, two, three, I would pass a three into entity numbers. Now if you use any other language like Java, C++, or most languages, this would actually be the zeroth index. But in Lua, this is the first index. So one, two, three for shotgun clip, one, two, three, four for crafting currency large. I always make a mistake here because I assume that zero is the first index because I often think in terms of Java and C++, but remember that is the number one index whenever you're trying to index into tables like this. Let's go back to our map. We're gonna change this center pusher. Instead of calling spawn by name, we're gonna spawn by, and look at that, I already forgot what the script was called. Uh, spawn gift by number, spawn, gift by number, good, and I'm gonna pass it. This should be a three. All right, here we are. I'll press the button. I should get multiple shotgun shells. There we go, and I can stack them up nice. So do remember, when you're working with tables in Lua, they don't start at index zero. I always forget that. I always wanna count zero, one, two, three, so zero being the first index. But in Lua, it is number one is the first index, and that's why when I put number two in there, I was still getting health files. If I put a three in there, I start to get shotgun shells. So again, hopefully that was helpful. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe and like, and let me know what else you want to see. I've got a few more tutorials on the go right now, one specifically about trying to get NPCs to behave better with think functions, and another to see what else I can do with headcrab behaviors to get them to do some interesting stuff around a map. So thank you for watching and good luck with your Half-Life Alex mods.